So just f up and then flat for the rest of the day. 27 points on the day. No break of the upside resistance on the trend. Um, and no failure, no failure of gamma neutral on the monthly. We do we did, however, close slightly below uh gamma neutral on the weekly contract which is kind of interesting it's not super interesting but i guess it's better than nothing over here on es uh we have we have failed well failed the trend from that bounce we've also failed the bear flag a second time um without a break to the upside of the downtrend there what does that set us up for well i mean tomorrow is probably data dependent so i would say that this could just turn right around and break out to the upside again uh 5906 or 592750 providing the jolts data is good um however if it is not we, we, we may find that uh, this level can be lost pretty quickly, especially on a loss of 58.50 um, and a fall towards the bearish range. Uh, commodities dropping pretty hard today with the de-escalation um, out of Israel, or well, assumed de-escalation because they didn't strike any significant military targets in Iran uh, or, well, any oil or nuclear targets in iran yields up today dollar down actually so dollar kind of flattening out here against resistance um, not that it won't necessarily continue up uh it could uh, especially with the the data later this week but there is there is right now a presumption that last last month's nfp data um was kind of a one-off and that we're gonna see that data kind of revert back to mean uh with this month's print however if labor remains strong that's very inflationary um and we will we will likely see yields at the top end of the curve and the dollar rise in the back half of the week with stronger labor data that's starting with jolts tomorrow correlation on the one and three months starting to break apart again the three month correlations uh holding a little stronger but uh one month correlation is starting to fall off. Um, this means we're likely seeing more short vol come in. Um, I, I know broadly earnings are expected to be down this quarter, um, and we may be starting to see some call selling uh, on the underlying components of the indexes, especially because all of them are already, you know, they've already kind of run to the top of their chains, respectively. And so without much room to the upside, people are you know likely to sell vol into what they expect to be negative earnings. Um, and I think we're starting to see a little bit of the effect of that, but not enough yet to really move indexes. Uh, carry trade leverage broke above 803 today. So despite Dixie being down, um, mostly against the euro and the pound, um, the dollar was up against the yen. Um, and that leverage uh, increased pretty significantly. The uh, forward yield on volatility at 5.11%, slightly above the Fed funds rate into close here today. This could spark a bit of a run on volatility, especially going into the morning. I expect that right now what we're seeing is the effect of hedging uh, the event risk. Uh, but however, if there is risk realized in the event, we will probably see demand for long vol pick up, um, and then we might see a reduction um, in the leverage in the carry trade and an increase in the forward yield and volatility. This is especially true if the yield curve uninverts, although I think the only thing that's going to do that or has the potential to do that this week is Yellen's issue, issuance announcement, like the QRA on Wednesday, or possibly NFP if it comes in very strong again. We can see the yield curve you know, move back into inversion on the 10 and 2. Uh, bond vols staying fairly flat, although I do think it picked up a little bit today and still a bit divergent from correlation, um, which also isn't really moving much. Skew pulled back a little bit. Uh, Friday, but we didn't really see much of a bullish reaction today. And I would say that by the looks of it, we've seen increased tail risk hedging today. So we'll probably see skew move down a little bit tomorrow or tonight. 40.55% of the S&P below its 20-day moving average. So not a lot of breadth 
um, coming in to hold this up. Even though Dow and Russell overperformed a little bit today, you know, most of the index weighting, especially in a market cap weighted index like the S and P, is you know tech, right? And uh, without without any big move in tech, we're unlikely to see prices fall, and we're probably not going to see any big moves in tech until after their earnings are done later this week. Um, correlation with VIX is actually flat uh, between VX and cash VIX. Um, out on the weekly this week, I believe, moved down just just a smidge. Um, so a little bit more short vol coming in, but nothing nothing significant, right? Like we're not seeing short volatility positioning like we were seeing back from like October to July, right? The fear of uh, the uncertain environment is much higher. Um, and the confidence in the short vol trade is massively shaken, right? Uh, if, if we were seeing short vol come in hot and heavy and ready to push this thing to 6,000, this, this correlation would be breaking down very, very quickly. And it's not. And this is one of the reasons why, like, the bulls really aren't right here either. The bears aren't because, you know, we have support. Um, and we're really unlikely to break that until there's some sort of news. Um, but the bulls the bulls aren't doing anything either, right? They're not piling into short vol. They're not buying out of the money positioning. They're, they're, not, they're not pushing to drive the market higher. They're just sitting here. Um, and, you know, a lot of this looks like profit taking or at least getting ready to take profits in the event that, you know, um, news doesn't move in a favorable way. And with the election coming up and the, the shitload of data we have over the next two weeks, it's likely we could just continue to stagnate until something big happens. And then even, even if that data is big, if it's, you know, if we still have more stuff coming up, the, like we might get like a quick move in price and then snap back to that kind of mean reversion where everyone's positioned. Fed fund futures now pricing in even fewer rate cuts uh, after today's auctions, uh, mostly. Tails on the two and five year were fairly significant. Um, the bond market's expectation for inflation though, is going to continue to rise. Um, and that is going to put some downward pressure on the pe Fed's ability to uh, loosen monetary policy over the next few meetings, possibly over the next few quarters maybe over the next year. Um, so, you know, what was being priced in is 100 points of rate cuts by the end of this year and 150 by the end, by by what we're looking at here, which is uh, June of 2025, is now down to about half of that. And I think there's a pretty good likelihood that we don't see a cut out of the Fed at this meeting at all. Um, obviously, it'll be dependent on labor, but um, I think there's a pretty good chance labor remains strong alongside GDP coming in at three and at three and a quarter, three and a half percent. So uh, I don't see any reason for us to see significant contraction on the labor market. The dollar is still strong. Spending is still up. The consumer is, you know, not retreated. At least the, their sentiment has improved. Um, they're not buying big things, which is detrimental, but they are buying things. Smaller purchases, uh, more more frequent smaller purchases, but less reliant on less, less reliance on credit. And so we're starting to see the housing market take a little bit of hit of a hit. And we're gonna get home prices this week, um, which I don't expect to be very good, um, especially because rates went up and inventory is at the highest level since like before 2019. I mean, nobody wants to get a loan at 7%. Even, even, and we talked about this a little bit yesterday too, even the financially uneducated uh, don't like under somewhat understand the burden of that loan. And, you know, while they may have been more willing to take loans out at four and 5%, this is really starting to dry up the market of available buyers, right? Um, which means that, you know, as more and more sellers come to the market and don't find buyers, supply is going to increase. That should drive prices down. However, driving prices down won't be enough to catalyze buyers, right? That's not, not, not the way the housing market works. If those rates remain high, those buyers are going to still wait on the sidelines, especially once houses start pricing down, because then 
buyers are going to get greedy. They're going to be like, oh, I'll wait for it to get even cheaper than it is now and even cheaper than it is now. And even, and so they, that kind of perpetuates a cycle of that. Um, and so something to keep an eye on. I've been watching the real estate market and home prices regionally a lot more closely lately because that's starting to weaken uh, substantially. Also, the commercial real estate sector is still shit. Uh, spread between the 10 to holding a positive 14.3%. And that's that's probably about it. I'd keep an eye on Japan tonight. They have, uh, I think, employment data, um, which I don't think it's expected to change much, but it may. There's a two-year JGB auction, which could have some effect on spreads. Tomorrow morning, we're going to uh, see German consumer confidence. That might be important, especially if it continues to fall. I think there's a five-year bond auction. We have a balance of trade in the morning, and that'll be important. Most That's mostly like a GDP modifier, right? So we're going to be... I mean, balance of trade has continued to fall pretty steadily over the last several months, um, and the deficit's increasing, right? So um, we're likely to continue to see that deficit increase. Um, however, it, it really doesn't have an effect on anything except GDP. No one's no one's no one's really actively trading that outside of their you know growth expectations. Um, we have Red Book in the morning, which will give us a little bit of insight into you know spending habits. But uh, I think home prices and jolts are by far going to be the most important data tomorrow. Fed services, if it falls again, uh, Dallas Fed services could be kind of. Uh, impactful, but probably not. Uh, it'll it'll probably all pale in comparison to Jolts. Um, later in the day, once Jolts is shaken off a bit, we have a 42 day and a 52 week bill auction, and then we have a two year FRN and a seven year note. I would say that the FRN and the seven year note have a potential to shake things up, um, but there's a really good chance that based on the positioning I was looking at into tomorrow and the next day and out into Friday, um, we, we just don't move much until we get NFP. And even if we do, we, we will probably just mean revert back. So, you know, if, 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 if we get like a big boost from, you know, uh, like Joel's data, we'll probably just snap back. to you know, like 58, 30, 50 again, or, you know, even if we go to the downside, same thing. Um, because everyone's really just building all of their positioning, you know, right right around that range on the SPX. And so, you know, if we move this way, then, you know, we'll slip back. If we move this way, we'll slip back. And, and that looks like it's going to persist probably into NFP or into the end of the month. So, anyway, that's about it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I will see you tomorrow. Everybody have a great night. Later.